Hello and welcome. I'm Jake Eislin. I'm a senior product manager here at Steris Corporation. And I'm here today to offer an in-service on the 7080 General Surgical Table. The 7080 table is Steris' first all-electric surgical table. It is our most premium surgical table as well. It's ideal for all patients, all ages and all sizes. However, it's going to excel in highly complex procedures, the largest patients and the sickest patients. With an all-electric surgical table, you get some advantages over other table types, such as hydraulic tables. For instance, it will offer very precise and smooth movements while you're articulating the tabletop. As well, you'll get simultaneous movements of the tabletop, which means multiple sections moving at one time. This helps to get patients into position quickly, which is good for efficiency, as well as getting back to level in emergency situations. The 7080 was designed around maximizing surgical site access for OR staff, as well as maximizing C-arm imaging. A few features of the 7080, we offer 22 inches of low height to the floor, 22 inches of tabletop slide, 45 degrees of Trendelenburg, and an integrated x-ray channel where you can pass flash pads in under the tabletop instead of using x-ray tops. We'll cover many of those and a lot more in this in-service. I'll take about 10 to 15 minutes to cover the in-service, and let's get started. The Steris 7080 General Surgical Table offers the largest weight capacity Steris has ever offered in the surgical table. If we look down here to the base and column area, you'll see a convenient sticker located right here on the column. This details all of our weight capacities for the 7080 model. Starting at the highest weight capacity, we offer 1,200 pounds of raise and lower when the slide is centered. This will be in normal orientation only. Next, we offer 1,000 pounds. This is articulation capability when the tabletop is centered. This is in normal or reverse patient orientation. Lastly, 700 pounds of weight capacity. And this is an unrestricted weight capacity, meaning all articulations and tabletop slide is allowed in normal and reverse orientation. Next, let's cover the tabletop. The 7080 offers a four section tabletop, a head section, a back section, a seat section, and a leg section. I'm gonna start with the head and the leg sections and talk through how they're attached. This is a dual articulating head section. It has a single lever underneath which actu actuates its capabilities. It offers tilt and height functionality. I like to position my left hand right here on the side rail and I'm using my right hand underneath on the single blue lever. When I pull the lever, I'm able to tilt up and down, 90 degrees up and 90 degrees down. I also have the ability to lift the height. From here, I can adjust height and tilt together in any position I like to accommodate things such as the snipping position or a patient with a challenging airway. Additionally, this creates a quick lateral position uh, without using pillows or blankets stacked up. To attach and detach the dual articulating headrest, there are two blue levers located right under the end of the back section. I'll pull outward on those, the headrest will pop out slightly, and I simply pull it out. This head section can be attached at the leg section to accommodate reverse orientation positioning. All I did was slide it in, it locks in tight. To remove it, I just reverse those operations I showed before, pull on the tabs, pops out slightly, take it out, and I can return it to the normal head end for normal orientation positioning. Let's cover the leg section. This is the standard featherweight leg section we offer with the table. It's a lightweight leg section weighing 18 pounds. I like to find the middle where the notches are in the side rail to underneath, I'll find two paddles. I'm gonna pull outward on those paddles to release the leg section. Pull it away, and here you can see those paddles operated just like this. At this point, I can put the leg section away if I'm doing certain procedures uh, that will require positioning 
Uh, for instance, lithotomy positioning, I can move these leg receptacles down out of the way. When it's time to bring the leg section back, I like to bring it back. I hold it in a position such as this where I can see these tips right here. I position it like this, line them up, and just lift. I hear it click in, give it a tug to make sure, and I also check visually to make sure I only see the green line sticker here. If any of the yellow line sticker is showing, we're not all the way in. Just a little safety mechanism to make sure you get good attachment of the leg section. Continuing on, let's talk about pads. We offer a complete set of three pads, head, torso section, and leg. We offer pads in two inch, three inch, and four inch sizes, and we offer them in two different varieties of fasteners. We offer standard or traditional Velcro fasteners, hook and loop, and this table is outfitted with a special type of Velcroless attachment we like to call mushroom caps. These are our PRS pads, and they have a rubber grommet that fits into a metal fastener that helps to eliminate Velcro and the challenges it can have with cleaning. You simply push it over the tab or the fastener, push down with the heel of your hand, and you'll hear an audible click, and it's right in. When tucking a sheet, you're simply going to tuck right around those areas where a mushroom cap is and focus deeper tucking in the areas where a mushroom cap isn't. Continuing with the tabletop, let's focus now on the integrated x-ray channel. This is a channel under the tabletop from head to foot that allows for an x-ray cassette or flash pad to be inserted for mobile imaging. Simply take your x-ray cassette and slide it in under the tabletop. It'll pick up the channel here at the, the foot or at the head end, and you can pass the, the cassette under the tabletop as far as you need to image the patient. In situations where you need to move the cassette uh, into position where the column is getting into the way, we offer an x-ray cassette extension handle that can help you to deliver the cassette into position up into the body from either end. I talked earlier about how the 7080 is excellent for C-arm imaging. Using the tabletop slide function, you'll see that we can slide the tabletop 11 inches from center in each direction. That's a total of 22 inches of slide. This creates a very large anatomic imaging window for the C-arm to enter under the tabletop and image the patient. Here, we're seeing the lower body imaging, which is 42 and a half inches. That means we can image from the heels up into the belly with a lot of exposure for the C-arm. We can adjust height and accommodate the C-arm coming in all the way to the column. On the other side, towards the head, 22 inches of slide the other direction. This will produce a 44 inch imaging window Great for upper body exposure from the head down through the pelvis into the legs. And you can see that demonstrated right here. Let's transition to the controls of the table. We'll start with the hand control. This hand control has a large display screen as well as colored buttons that are also backlit. You'll notice the buttons that are used the most are color coordinated so that you can find them easily and access them through your memory, especially in dark lit ORs. Back up to the display, you'll see along the left hand side, there is a list of all the functions and articulations and the position in inches or degrees of the table. They're color coded to the buttons that they work with. Over on the right hand side, you'll see two graphic images of the table with a patient on top. This helps to denote the orientation of the patient, whether in normal or reverse orientation. And as you articulate and move the table, these graphics will change to reflect the actual position of the table. Up along the top of the remote, you'll get a status bar that has key information about the status of the table, such as the battery level, whether it's locked or unlocked, if you're in reverse orientation, or any service alerts that might need your attention. Moving into the functions of the hand control, the first things we get to are the lock and unlock buttons. To unlock the table, we'll hold the lock unlock button. We'll be prompted to wait and hold for three seconds. 
and we hear the table unlock. To relock the table, we'll hold or just push, single push of the lock button, and the table locks. In between lock and unlock is a menu button. When we push menu, we get into a list of settings. There's a help settings, alerts. You can change the language. You can change the units. And there's also a service module that can be accessed for information about service and preventive maintenance. Next, we have orientation and the level buttons. The table will default to this normal orientation position, but if you wish to change the orientation, you'll press and hold the reverse orientation button for two seconds, and the orientation will change. To go back to normal orientation, you hold that button again for two seconds, and it goes back. If you hold level, we'll level the tabletop. If you continue holding level, when slide is induced, the slide will come back to the center position. As we look down the rest of the hand control, you'll see the common articulations. Trendelenburg, tilt, height, slide, and back. Next is a leg up and down feature. We can move the leg section up and down using the blue buttons. If a leg section is removed, a left and right leg option will illuminate. This gives you the ability to move the left or right leg receptacles up and down to get them out of the way for certain procedures. You can move them simultaneously or individually. Down below, we have a flex button, a one-touch beach chair button, and kidney elevator up and down. Lastly, you'll find a convenient task light button on the bottom of the remote. When this is pressed, on the back side of the remote, a light will illuminate for use in dark lit ORs, which can be especially helpful for anesthesia providers who need to check the patient's face, eyes, airway, or any lines coming off the patient. Lastly, we can power the table down with the button that is red, the power button at the bottom, and we can stop all functions. You would press and hold that to turn off the, the table. The hand control will stay active for 10 hours during normal day surgery when the table's plugged in. If the table's unplugged and the floor locks are off, the hand control will deactivate after 30 minutes to reserve power. Additional features of the hand control, you'll notice, are the curved metal clip here at the top. Different from some of the clips we've offered in the past, a thicker gauge steel is used in this hand control clip, and the shape of it allows for the user to keep it on the side rail of the table, and when it's desired to be used, simply rotate it up, the button that's pushed, and then rotate it back down. This means you'll be pulling the hand control off the table far less than with previous models. Additionally, the wire or the cord is detachable. You simply pull on the collar and then to reinsert, line up the red dot with the red dot on the control and reinsert. The hand control will repower and you're ready to go. Let's transition to the backup control panel. It's located here on the side of the table's column. It's a full panel display with all the functions of the table, similar to the hand control. In the normal state, it's not active, so if you push a button by accident, nothing will happen. To activate the control, come down to the bottom right, and it says press and hold to activate. So we'll press this white button for two seconds, and you'll see the button illuminate. At this point, you're active and you can control the table. For instance, height up or height down. You have very similar features to the hand control in terms of layout. You have lock and unlock for the floor locks, reverse orientation and level, trend, tilt, height, slide, and back. You have control of the legs and the kidney elevator here. Finally, you can power off the table or stop any articulations with the red button. And the backup control panel will stay active for one minute before it deactivates. Now that we've covered the table's column, let's move down to the base. One of the key attributes of the 7080 was to promote or maximize 
surgeon access to the surgical site. You'll notice that the base of the table at the foot end has a large C-shaped cutout. This cutout will allow surgeons to move closer to the surgical site, especially ones working at the leg end, such as a urologist or a gynecologist. They'll be able to nest their feet into that large C-shape and get close into the perineal cutout. You'll also notice cutouts here at the side, under the column, where we've trimmed away the base as much as possible to create a large toe box for surgeons to nest in and belly up to the table. You'll notice that the table base covers are pitched slightly. This will allow fluids to move away from the table's center line and also in the event that any items should be accidentally placed on the table base, gravity would be pulling them away from the center column. Things such as arm boards, sequential compression devices, or warming equipment should never be placed on the base of the table. Another key reason why not to do that is around our collision prevention system. Our collision prevention system will protect the tabletop from colliding with the floor or the base or any other parts of the table. However, it does not detect items that might be placed under, around, or on the base of the table. The base of the table is outfitted with large dual caster wheels. These large caster wheels make mobility very easy for all users. The table will move into position easily and be repositioned with simplicity. Down at the head end of the base, you'll notice there are a few features. To the left, we have the plug for AC power to be inserted, as well as a fuse. There is a ground control stud if you ever wish to connect the table to grounding, followed by an LED indicator of the battery life. The table's battery life on average is one full day of heavy case load under battery power. The table can last longer if it's not used in a heavy case load situation, but we do recommend that you charge the table after each day of use. So that concludes this in-service for the 7080 General Surgical Table. I want to thank you for spending your time with me today. If you have additional questions about the 7080 General Surgical Table, reach out to us at steris.com or contact us directly. Thank you.